Now to perform 4D on the Volusan, now this is a Volusan I, but most of the concepts here apply to all Volusan systems. Now you know, they'll just those functions will be in different places, but things like the submenus and all that, there will be a button on a touch screen or somewhere on the screen where you can get to those submenus and get to the various functions. Now this is a later version of the Volusan I, so some features may not be available on your Volusan. But even on the E6 and other such E8, other such Volusan systems, the concepts and the functions will be there. You just basically need to find them. So if you're looking for training on a Volusan system and you can't find anything out there, this will help you get through because all the major concepts are there and the buttons are mostly the same. The features are the same, just in different places. Now, if you haven't yet looked at the video on the concepts of 4D imaging, if you haven't done it before or you're struggling, look at the previous video that discusses how the ultrasound actually sees 4D and why it's so difficult for most technicians the first time to get a 4D image. It's just an understanding of how the ultrasound renders that 4D image and what will give you the actual baby's face. So let's get into 4D imaging with the value sign. On all value signs, there's going to be some sort of setting with two and three trimester. And I can see that over here, and I'm going to choose two and three trimester. There might be a second trimester on there or something like that, but you want to take that one. It is going to be kind of the catch-all, most frequently used setting for 4D imaging. So you first select that, and you want to get an image of the baby's face. I will turn up the gain high, so my 4D image isn't going to be great. The probe marker is here, and I'm pretending the baby is in the ver vertex position or head down. And we can first try the auto to see if that helps, but I'm going to turn up the gain so it can be seen better on the video. And like I said in the Concepts movie, uh, again, this is a baby phantom, so I can get a perfect image every time. Usually, there is some sort of placenta, arm, hand, or something in the way, and so let's discuss that just for a minute. If there is any sort of bone in the way of that baby's face, when you get to 4D, it will either create a shadow over the baby's face, uh, umbilical cord on the face will make the face look a little bit deformed. Placenta will make the face blurry, grainy, or you won't be able to say anything at all. The ideal 4D image is like you see there, where you have fluid right in front of the face there. And if you can get a good pocket of fluid in front of the face, you're golden. Just remember that you are looking at one thin slice of the baby's face. So this may be perfect, but if you move the probe over a little bit, you might find that there's a hand on the other side of the face. So when you go to 4D and you see fingers and a hand and all that, but it looks perfect here, chances are that there's just sweep the probe. See, I can go back and forth like this. This is like that loaf of bread where I'm sweeping and I'm just looking at different slices of the bread. So it's going to show me if there's anything on that surface of the baby's face by sweeping back and forth that might be blocking the image. So once we have this, we're going to get what's called a region of interest box. We're first going to press the 4D button, and it gives us this region of interest box. And this region of interest box says, okay, this green line at the top and this yellow box around it is going to say, what are you looking to image? What this allows you to do is if there's placenta or something in the way, you can put that green line between the face and whatever's in the way, and you want to try and get that green line as close to the face as possible and as parallel to the face as possible. And notice that if I'm here, that, that nose is pointing one way and I'm getting more of the top of the face. If I slide up with the probe and angle it over, I can get that baby's face parallel to the line, and that is going to give me the best possible image. If that nose, chin, and head are mostly parallel to that green line as best you can get, that will give you the best image of the face. Now, I did show this region of interest box, but over on the left-hand side, you will see some presets. And you may not be able to see it on the screen here, but there are presets. And this has surface, surface big, and then a custom preset. I'm going to go ahead and choose surface. And this is going to be what's default on your system. If it came from Providian, chances are we did do a custom preset for you. If we did not, you can call us and we'll help you with that and set a custom preset. First thing I'm going to want to do with this surface is change my quality to max. That's going to give, slow down the frame rate a little bit, but it's best to trade frame rate for quality. The quality means it's going to use more lines to get that surface. So it's going to be a much more detailed image, but it's going to slow down the frame rate because it's sweeping a little slower to get more data for a better picture. So think of it more as a high resolution imaging versus low, Im low resolution imaging, which is exactly what it is. It's using more lines of sight with a high quality. So we can go ahead from there 
And again, we have our cheat sheet down here. The change can change this region of interest box. And you don't want to go too deep, but do try and get the whole face in there. The wider you go, the slower the frame rate. So try and just get it. So I'm just trying to get the baby's face here. And so I'm going to circle the, put the green line above the baby's nose and try and get the whole head in there. And then now at the bottom it says start. So you can either hit this right key or freeze. And the freeze, this will work on any value song. You can go ahead. I'm going to hit freeze. And so there is my 2D image on the left with the nose pointing up. And on the right, I'm seeing that 4D image. First thing I'm going to do anytime is go and change the game. Now I have the split screen up, but what you want to do is show that full baby's face. So you're just going to hit this button over here to go to full screen mode and you get the face. Now again, this is not a great image because I've got the gain really high. But there's a couple things that I want to change that will help optimize that image. We have on the left the mix, the threshold, 3D contrast, 3D brightness, and we adjusted the quality. So on the mix, we can go ahead and this mix, I'm going to click to the right or left, will either smooth out or give more texture to the baby's face. And all these controls, so if I'm at 0, 100, it's almost too smooth and it looks kind of bubbly, but that's the way this baby actually looks so, on the inside. So uh, the reason you're going to want to play with that is because too much texture, and that's going to be on the other side of the mix, it's going to be texture on one side and smoothness on the other. And on any of these buttons here, all these controls, I highly recommend you just turn them all the way one way and all the way the other. So for example, the threshold, if I take the threshold all the way down, you'll see my image slowly gets darker. And basically what that threshold is doing is it's eliminating, trying to eliminate as much artifact as possible. So it is only taking the really, really strong signals. And now if I turn it up, it's going to turn up the threshold and give me more data. So if there's any artifact in that image, it's going to show up really, really bright. So normally the threshold you're going to prefer is probably between 27 and 30, depending on your system. And across value sounds, I typically find that somewhere in that range, uh, 27 to 30, and some prefer like a 41 or a 44 because it's a little brighter and it gives you more detail. 3D contrast and brightness. Again, I just highly recommend turning it all the way down and all the way up, and you can see how it's affecting the image on the right-hand side and eliminating some of that artifact. So the default is 50-50, and if you go too high, you can see the image really turns to crap. So you want to find something in the middle, and 50-50 is generally okay. But if you're really interested in optimizing the image and you have time to do it with a very patient patient, it's a good idea to do all this because you can save these as a custom preset as shown in a previous video. But real quick, to save the custom preset, you need to freeze the image and make sure after you've made all these changes, do not leave 4D. All those changes, if I change the mix, the threshold, 3D contrast, brightness, quality, and also go to full screen, in order to save those settings, I have to freeze. But if I go back to 2D, all those settings will be removed. So I freeze the image. I'll press Utility, go to System, and User Settings, 3D, 4D programs, and you can overwrite any of these. I recommend, highly recommend leaving Surface and Surface Big because you'll want those in case your settings ever get lost or you mess up a setting. Usually it's the third setting, this TUI, fetal cardiac, if you don't need any of these. And there's a blank one down here you could use. So I'm just going to exit. I didn't make any changes, but I can just exit that and go back to the 4D imaging. So after we've made some of those adjustments, there's some other things we might want to take a look at here. Uh, when you first go to 4D, if you already have your settings already set there and you've got a custom preset, you're probably not going to mix with mess with mix, threshold, contrast, brightness, or quality. Those are all going to remain the same. The first thing you're going to want to do is adjust the gain. And typically what I'll do is turn the gain all the way down. As you lose more gain, you're going to lose more of the face. It looks similar to how the threshold works, but they are different. I usually turn the gain down until I can see the orbits of the eyes and then bring it back up. But basically this is more of a subjective thing. It's whatever you like to see. There's no perfect setting for the gain. It's going to be different in every situation. Next we have some functions up here. So if I want to change this rotation X, Y, Z, and pair shift, which I'll explain in just a moment, I'm going to press down the active mode, and now I can do rotation X. And what this does 
is if the baby's looking down, I can turn the face up and down, press down for rotation Y, it's gonna turn left and right. And this is if you can't get a good position with the probe, you're gonna to wanna to change these. Z, it's gonna change that. Parallel shift, this moves your region of interest box forward and backward. It's actually moving that region of interest box forward or backward to cut off the face. Now if I go to 2D, it won't do the same, but if I go to this split screen, essentially if I use that parameter shift, it works a little differently when you're in the split screen, so it doesn't give you an example here. But essentially, you're moving the baby's face forward and back. So see, as I go above this green line, I no longer have the baby's face because anything above that green line is going to be cut off. So like I've cut off the baby's face here, I can scroll it back down and get that baby's face right back into the screen. Now, something else I can do is change something called the curve. And that curve is that green line, and I can bring that, say there's placenta in front of the face, and I'm having trouble cutting it out. I don't have to have that green line parallel. And this is uh, software on like the 730s, BTO5 or higher, or any other value sign after that. And get to the curve, you're gonna hit this arrow pointer here. This is really not intuitive at all, but here you can adjust this curvature of the green line so you can see on the right hand side it's cutting out part of the face there and I can adjust it left and right to try and get just that image of the baby's face so instead of having to really move the probe around I can adjust this to help cut out anything that's in front of the face now remember if there is a bone in front of the face your image isn't going to be very good because the ultrasound can't see through bone and it's going to reflect all the sound back what you'll end up with is just a dark image across the face and you won't get anything at all. The placenta and the umbilical cord is a lot easier than anything with the bone in front of the face. So if you don't like what you did with the curve, just hit C up there and reset the curve and it goes back to straight. I can click on that arrow pointer again and get all this. Now, much of the time, I'm gonna go back to full screen, much of the time when you start your 4D, the baby's going to be upside down. This is where we're going to use this R3D here, and it'll flip the baby upside down. You can also use the rotation of the X or Y to flip the baby upside down. I'm sorry, Z. And that can flip the baby upside down too, but the easiest is just to hit this and flip it upside down and back. Now another thing is that this, if you've got a larger baby, you want to adjust this volume angle to wider angle and this is going to slow your frame rate down a great deal I went all the way up to 85 and it dropped my frame rate down a great deal down to about one and a half frames per second so you'll want to find something in the volume angle usually about 65 is common for the 4d settings and you'll get a decent frame rate there this one's got about two frames per second there which is more than enough don't get so hung up a lot of people are hung up on frame rates and really, the most important thing is just getting a good image. Finally, to help optimize your image, the most important thing you can do is just go back to 2D, get the best image you can, and go with the basics. Just get that regular box right there, get it started, and get used to how the probe works. And you want to make micro adjustments and just try and follow the baby's body around. And it's a lot harder than you think, but you know, do things to angle the probe this way, angle the probe that way, push up, down, and understand that on this is a 3D plane that you're working with. So you can make adjustments. Every single movement is going to have a fairly large impact on what you're looking at. So as I scroll down, you can follow the baby. You can see the fingers. And it's a dexterity thing. And the more practice you have moving this around, the easier it's going to be and the quicker it's going to be for you to find the best image. You're going to have a huge advantage over others if you can do this well because your images, you're always going to get a better image because you're doing less. A lot of people will rely on these X, Y, Z controls to try and make the image better. But as you can see, if I change this, I'm actually asking the probe, even though this flashlight or you know this probe is looking down and rendering here, I'm asking for it to look at something over here. And your image quality is going to be way lower than it would be if you just move the probe 
and view the side of the head that way. So now you can see how poor the image is. I changed that Y rotation. So now I'm asking it to look at the face when my image is of the ear. And you can see how bad the image quality is now that I made that rotation. That face looks distorted. The depth isn't right on it. So if I just went back and I did make those changes, I can click this I button and it's going to take me right back to the beginning. So if I made all those changes and totally screwed it up, I can hit that I button and it's going to be right back, change all those XYZ controls that I changed and bring me back to the original settings. So again, feel free to use all these controls. You can always go back to that. And if you change the quality or the brightness or the contrast and you don't like what you did, you can go to this set rendering mode, which is probably not available on the other value signs. You would have to hit the probe application, click there, and you would get it there. So in this 4D, I'm going to go right back. I'm going to press 2 to go to surface big, and it changed all the way back. All those settings, the gain, everything like that went right back to how it was originally. So now I'm going to have to go back and make that. But all those changes I made that I didn't like, and the mix, since I didn't save the preset, the mix is there. The threshold is right back at the beginning. Go in. Click exit. Now there are a couple other things that I can take a look at here with the baby. I'm going to go back see how that baby is all blistered out. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to take that back and smooth that out a lot and get a better image of that baby. I'm going to go ahead and click S for a submenu. And for those of you who really want to get in to optimize an image, there's quite a few things you can do. So under the submenu, the first thing we'll look at is parameter, also marked with a D. So I can go to parameter and this will have a large impact and you may not like it at all, but if you really want to get into seeing how this thing works, you can go ahead. We have our gray mix and our gray over here, and you can try various ones. So if I want to go to surface smooth, I can click E and see how that affects my image. I can try W for light, with no gradient. You can see that's terrible. Q for the light gradient, and that was the default. If I press 1, it'll take me to the surface smooth also. And again, this is something you really want to play with and see if it helps your image. And if you like your new settings, you can save these as a secondary preset. So the default uses surface texture, and you can try that surface smooth to see if you like it a little better and automatically change that mix to 100. And then all these other settings are more for skeletal or a see-through baby and not anything you'd be interested in. So I'm going to go back to that submenu. Gray chroma maps, you can try these. Press 3 and take it to creepy colors like ice or blue. Blue looks really creepy. <laughs> Typically the sepia is what everybody's used to and is the best. So I'm going to go back to sepia because, oops, three sepia and change that back. Uh, SRI2 is a speckle reduction. Leave it on. Background, this can change your background color. Let me hit that arrow and just click plus and minus. And you can see that the background tint around here got a little bit lighter. Generally, you just want to leave that at default. I'm going to click exit. And before we finish, there's something very important I want to cover again. When you hit 4D, once you have your presets set in, you'll want to check this every time. And typically, there's a key to know if you made a mistake. You want to select your preset because it will default to that preset a lot of the time. And it will go back to a default or some other setting. And your image is going to look like crap. So if you had set a preset, always have that preset set in full screen. And then when you, when you go to that, you'll know if it goes to full screen that you have your correct preset setting. So if I go back, I've got this set up with it in full screen. If I go back to 2D and I start up the machine for the day, and I go to 4D and I'll just say that it automatically went back to default. And you don't check that. You'll go into 4D and you'll see it went to that split screen. If you see that split screen, it means you're probably in the wrong setting. So I'm just going to click U, go to render setting. And I can just choose my surface big as the preset, click my full screen, and I'm back to that proper setting. And that concludes the 4D training on the Volusan Eye. Thank you for watching.